This is geometry 8.4. We're talking about trigonometry. So when we talk about trigonometry, one thing that's required is we have to have a right triangle. Must have a right triangle to use we usually abbreviate it and we call it trig. It's trigonometry. To use trig, you need a right triangle. You have to have the box in the corner. Now there's something called Sokotoa and we're going to use Sokotoa to help us know how to set up our ratios. So the sign of an angle, of a right triangle, the sign, look up here, this is the S of Sokotoa, has an O and an H. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. This Sokotoa is a shortcut to help you remember what we're going to write down in here. Sine is opposite over... hypotenuse. When we talk about cosine, that would be the one that starts with a C. It follows with two letters with an A and an H, stands for adjacent in hypotenuse. So cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So notice how those two are a little bit different. Sine uses opposite over hypotenuse. That's why we have it SOH. So katoa helps remind us that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So katoa Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent, Sokotoa, the T stands for tangent. What's the O stand for? Opposite. What's the A stand for? Adjacent. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So these are the trig ratios you need to know. The word Sokotoa helps you memorize what those ratios are. Now when we talk about opposite and adjacent, it depends from where we're talking about. For one thing, we will never, listen to this carefully, we will never do opposite and adjacent from the 90 degree angle. Okay? I guess we do talk about opposite because that's the hypotenuse. The opposite is the hypotenuse. But we never do our calculations from 90 degrees. We always do our calculations from an acute angle. Here they're talking about what are the sides compared to angle A. From angle A's perspective, the opposite side is across from angle A. This is the leg that's opposite to angle A. This is the leg that is adjacent to angle A. Adjacent means next to. Opposite means across. Now if you were doing it from angle B, across would be over here. This would be opposite from angle B. This would be adjacent to angle B. So it depends on what your perspective is. So let's talk about what the sine of A would be for a triangle that has all the measurements given to us. Notice that we don't know any angle values except the 90 degrees. We don't know this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle or it's definitely not a 45, 45, 90 triangle. But we do have some measurements. 
So, remembering Sokotoa, and the more times you write that, the more you'll be familiar with it. Don't ask on quiz day, how do you spell Sokotoa? All right, write it down, and you'll be able to make more sense of it. So, the sine of A, you have to go from angle A. Sine of A, S stands for sine, so we're looking for the opposite and the hypotenuse. Well, opposite is across from angle A, so this is considered the opposite side. Next to angle A is the adjacent side. And, of course, across from the 90 is always the hypotenuse. So if we're going to do sine of A, then we're going to say 5 over 13. So what would the cosine of A be? What's the cosine of A? Well, look up at Sokotoa. Here's your C that says this is cosine. Adjacent over hypotenuse is 12 over 13. You've got to label your side so you know which one is the opposite, which one is adjacent and hypotenuse. Then you use Sokotoa to be able to write them in the correct order. Tangent of A. Well, what's the ratio for tangent? Looking at Sokotoa, tangent starts with a T. We have opposite over adjacent, so 5 over 12. So there wasn't any solving for this type. We were just writing down what the ratio is. The ratio of sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So here comes the solving part. So we're given a triangle. This triangle has the least amount of information possible. It has the right angle, which is required. It gives us a degree value. It doesn't matter which degree value it gives you. Okay, they could call it 31. They could call it 59. It doesn't matter. You can use 59 if you want. You get the same answer. You'll use a different trick function, but you'll get the same answer. So we're using 31. Across from 31... We all know that that's considered the opposite side. Next to 31 is considered the adjacent side. And then we're not very interested at it because there's no information here, but this would be considered your hypotenuse. So which trig function are we going to use? The main question people ask are, I don't know which trig function. How do I know which trig function to use? So we're going to look at the word Sokotoa. And this has opposite and adjacent. So you're looking for the one that deals with opposite hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent. So we're going to use tangent of 31 equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. So now to solve for x, a common mistake is people think that they're going to divide by 17. You can't divide by 17. You want the x to be on top. So if we turn this into a proportion by always writing a 1 over your trig function, 
then you can cross multiply and have x times the tangent of 31 equals 17, or 17 times 1, which is 17. Now we don't have any denominators, but we don't have x by itself either. So how do we get x by itself? Tangent of 31 is just a number. So we can divide by that number. We're not dividing by 31, we're dividing by the tangent of 31. And for a decimal version of this, you would need a calculator. So be sure you have a calculator. So you want to be sure that you cl click on mode and you're in degree mode because what we're doing calculations are in degree. Radian is another language for angle measurements. So what we're going to do is 17 divided by tangent of 31. Because here is our fraction, 17 divided by tangent of 31. And we get our answer of 28, 29. So that's approximately 28, 29. So our next one, we're going from the 42. So you want to first decide what the sides are called. From the 42, if you look across from it, that's an X. So that's considered your opposite side. Next to the 42, the leg would be the adjacent side. And across from the 90 is always considered the hypotenuse. So you now have to decide which trig function you're going to use to work with the opposite side and to work with the 52. Opposite and hypotenuse. Sine. Opposite hypotenuse is going to be sine. So we do sine of 42, because that's our angle value, that's always next to your sine. Sine of 42 equals the opposite, which we don't know, and the hypotenuse, which is 52. We put our trig function over 1, so we can just use a nice simple proportion. So we have 52 times the sine of 42, that equals x. There's no dividing necessary here. So don't just always think that you're dividing. We cross multiplied, and that left our x all by itself. x times 1 is just x. 52 times the sine of 42. Don't say 52 times 42. It's 52 times the sine of 42. So we're going to use our calculator. 52 times the sine of 42. We get 34.79. And you can use the approximate symbol because it's a rounded answer. 34.79. So here's our next one. Notice that we are given information on the adjacent side, the next to side. We're, of course, given information about the opposite, the 90, which is the hypotenuse. We're not working with the opposite of the angle. So we're not worried about opposite, so we're not going to work with sine, we're not going to work with tangent, we're working with the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So we're going to use cosine. Cosine of 29 equals the adjacent 
over the hypotenuse. So if the x is in the denominator, this is one step harder. You have to do that one extra step. We're going to cross multiply and do x times the cosine of 29 equals 18. We'll divide by the cosine of 29. That's the extra step. So now you have x by itself. And we're going to say 18 divided by the cosine of 29. And we have 20.58. There are some calculators that require you to put the 29 in before the cosine. If you're using your phone, I bet to calculate cosine of 29, you have to say 29 then cosine. So you've, you've got to know how to use your device. So you want to practice using the device you'll use on the quiz. Okay, on the flip side, we have an angle of elevation is what we get when we look up at an object, the angle of elevation, or we have an angle of depression and that's the angle of looking down at an object. You are at the top of a roller coaster that is 100 feet above the ground. The angle of depression, looking straight across, the angle of depression is the angle that's formed by looking straight across. So if you're on this roller coaster car looking straight out, we're going to look down 44 degrees. So that is called the angle of depression. We want to know how far are you going to ride down the hill. So you can consider that to be your triangle that you formed. You also know that alternate interior angles are congruent, so you could consider this one to be 44. Your choice and how you want to do that, you get the same answer. We're looking for a height of 100, and we're looking for how long are you going to be riding on the downslope. So this is the opposite side, this is the hypotenuse. So sine of 44 equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. We put in our proportion. We have x times the sine of 44 equals 100. Divide by the sine of 44. 100 divided by the sine of 44 gives us 143.96 and those are in feet. A railroad crossing arm, railroad crossing arm sticks up, is 20 feet long and it has an angle of elevation of 35 degrees. The question is, how high is that up? So we're going to use the opposite and the hypotenuse. So using the word Sokotoa, that helps remind us which trig function we're going to use, the opposite and hypotenuse. So we're going to use the sine of 35 that equals x over 20. We can cross multiply to get 20 times the sine of 35. And using our calculator, 20 sine of 35 is 11.47 feet. Our last one, a kite is flying 150 meters in the air. So here you are flying a kite, and
and you have a string that goes up to your kite. You're 150 meters up in the air. You have a string that's holding at 40 degrees. And we want to know the horizontal distance. So looking across, we have the opposite side. Looking adjacent. So we're not looking at the hypotenuse. Height is measured at 90 degrees. So thinking about Sokotoa, opposite and adjacent is going to be tangent of 40 degrees equals the opposite over the adjacent. So we put our tangent over 1, cross multiply, tangent of 40 equals 150. We divide by 40, a tangent of 40, and that gives us x to be approximately 150 divided by tangent of 40. So that gives us 178. 0.76 feet.